this camper weighs so much, 18,000 pounds, that you have to have a tire this big, which is 41 inches tall. This ambulance came from Yellowstone National Park. It had 14,000 miles on it, so it was like brand new. It was an amazing deal. Hi, I'm Tom. Come take a tour. When I got the ambulance, I think there was a seat there. Uh, there was some counter here. There were some overhead cabinets, lights. I ripped it all out of there, ripped all the insulation out, everything. Welcome to my kitchen. The sink in this camper is relatively small. You know, I wanted to keep as much counter space as possible. And so you do your dishes and then you end up stacking them here and pretty soon you have a pile of dishes that you have to deal with. So I have friends, Greg and Ginger, who gave me this great idea. They just have a drawer, actually something like this, where you open it up and you drop your dishes in there as soon as they're washed. The bottom of it is triangular, and so any water that dribbles out of there goes into a little tray in the bottom. And I thought I was gonna have to put a fan or something in there to, to deal with that moisture, but I never have, it just evaporates. Um, got these latches that came from the ambulance. They're really nice for hanging the towels on, and I used them as door handles as well. And then under the sink is just, um, there's a pan that, that has its own little slot to fit in. Storage, gotta make storage out of every little spot. As you're doing your dishes, you're thinking about your water, of course, or whatever you're doing in the sink. So I have a gauge right here, basically. Uh, it's just a tube where you can see the level of the water. Total water capacity on board is 70 gallons. A little bit of room under the cooktop here. And so we made kind of a weird drawer to take up that space. And this is basically all things electrical. And sometimes when I'm using the cooktop for a while, I'll leave that open so I can get better air, but I've never had it shut down for heat or anything like that. Okay, let's talk about this uh, induction cooktop here for a second. I guess the hardest part about it is you, you've got to have good batteries, you've got to have good electrical system to have an induction cooktop. But if you have that, don't even consider, in my opinion, going with anything but induction. As long as you have good pots and pans that have some, some steel in them, some magnetic, what is that, ferrous material, uh, this is the way to go. This is a garbage chute right here, so you can just shove things right into the garbage and it ends up right back here in the back of this drawer. This is an isotherm something 2000, I think, fridge. <laughs> I think that's how much it costs anyway. Two door, uh oh, look, I just, I just traveled. Can you tell? <laughs> that's funny. Oh yeah. So I really like a stand-up fridge. I, I guess what I don't like is doing this to get my mayonnaise or whatever it might be. So I went with a pretty opulent tall fridge. Uh, I think it's five cubic foot on the right for the fridge and I, I believe it's two cubic feet on the left. Pantry area, here are all the spices, uh, kind of tea and coffee. And that's kind of another junk drawer basically. But these are nice because they're always things that you need right away. And it's just, it's nice to be able to just grab things, especially the spices when you're cooking. And then uh, the main food storage is right there. It's uh, accessible, it's easy, um, and it tucks away for when you're traveling. So I like that, that's a handy feature of this thing. One of my favorite parts of having a camper, it, it is an amazing thing to have a toilet in your car, just let me tell you that. On my own uh, YouTube channel, I'm going to dedicate a whole video to tips and tricks and why and how you mount it and where you mount it. So uh, tune in for that later. This is a nature's head composting toilet. One unique thing about this is that this is the ceiling. And once again, I'm always about storage. So I, I didn't want to take this whole space. And then I realized you don't have to have full height to get into your toilet because when you sit down, you naturally go like that. So save that space if you can. We're gonna start at the top and just work our way down. So got a little cabinet here that um, keep all the bathroom type things in. Uh, this is interesting. This is called a thermostatic mixing valve. And I'll try to give you the short version. Basically you set the temperature, hot, cold comes into there and then that temperature comes out in the shower. So you don't have two knobs to adjust the shower and it's all to save water. Standard sink, that's a standard uh, faucet right there. And I, I couldn't find at the time 
uh, the sink that I needed for this small space, so I made one out of starboard, and it came out pretty good, or at least I thought. And then uh, recently I added this other storage compartment. Um, just don't want to, that, that wasted space just kills me. And there's another one down here that you can put bigger things in and it actually goes into the electrical compartment. Let me show you how the shower works really quick. So this door just slides closed. And these doors, this is a pretty heavy door. These doors have uh, magnetic locks on them. So there's a switch right up here. You flip a switch, see if we can hear it. There you go, you flip a switch, it pushes a pin into a hole and locks that door open. So that door closes and this door closes. There's another electromagnetic switch on that one. And then you just drop a shower curtain in front of the composting toilet, uh, pick up the floor panel and you are in the shower. When I did this first video, I got so many questions. How do you afford this? What did you do? What did it cost? So this ambulance came from Yellowstone National Park. It was sold to a reseller in Texas, and I bought it for, from him for $44,000. Uh, it had 14,000 miles on it, so it was like brand new. So uh, still, a, it was an amazing deal. I put about 70, gotta do the math here, about 70 to 80 grand into it. So the, wor the value, not including any time, of this camper is about $120,000, something like that over to the living room now. The couch is very comfortable, it's deep. It's nice to have two tables here for two people. And even when you're by yourself, you can eat on one and you tend to kind of stack things on the other one rather than piling it up on the bed. We have a big storage drawer there. That pulls out and becomes the step and the seat, uh, where to put your feet when you're sitting on the couch. And then also the step to get up into the uh, bed. All right, so we're going to make this drawer into the secondary seat. So you pull out that weird mechanism, get the cushion out. So that just sits there. Cushion basically goes right there. And this is on 300 pound drawer slides. So once you get it up there, hop up into your seat, put your feet up and cuddle with your partner. We have a seven pound Chihuahua now. And so the Chihuahua has her own little house down there. We do have a, uh, it's a two by two foot Bomar uh, skylight. And uh, it's really neat. You can see the stars at night, you know, it's fun. I, I saw one time there was a dove landed on there and was slurping water off the top when I'm laying in bed. It was like three or two feet from my face, which was kind of fun. It does have a couple drawbacks. And I think the main one is just that it's single pane. So it'll get some condensation on it and stuff like that. But other than that, it's uh, it's been great. That's the Pioneer mini split. That is the inside unit. It's a 9,000 BTU unit and that can be used for heating and cool primarily for cooling because I live in the southwest but we can run that off the batteries or when you're plugged in it's incredibly efficient the cool thing about this bed is that you can grab a couple handles here lift up and it just slides forward and then the back drops and it becomes a queen size bed so by myself full size plenty when Carly's with me we turn it into a queen size bed the very first camper I ever had was a Volkswagen Vanagon. I was doing uh, flight training at the time, and so I had to drive to do some of this schooling type stuff. And I realized if I had that thing, I could um, have my food with me, I could have my, a bed with me, I wouldn't have to get a hotel. And so that was kind of the first eureka moment for me with campers. Several years ago, <laughs> um, I had a life-changing event. I, had a, I got divorced. I kind of look around and I'm thinking a lot of questions about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and what I should be doing maybe. The place where I was the most happy was down in Baja. I, I used to go down there for wind sports and I, I really loved that and I wanted to do more of it. Ended up buying a tiny place in Mexico which was great for a few years but then uh, I still wanted more freedom than that. So I sold that place, uh, I sold the other camper I had. And with that money, I was able to create this monster behind me. One of the best things about this camper and all ambulances actually is that there's so much storage and every single one is lockable. And so I can, I can use specific boxes for specific tasks and keep all my stuff organized. We are at the electrical compartment for the, uh, the camper. 
I have 400 amp hours of battery and a Multi Plus uh, 3000 and a Smart Solar MPPT 15085 and 1300 watts of solar on the roof comes in through the solar controller into the batteries, et cetera, et cetera. I think we all know this. That's not me, that's the ambulance company. And then, you know, I've, I was able to tie in my own stuff pretty easily because it's such a wonderful system. I have a filtration system that will allow me to uh, pull water out of pond, river, stream, whatever. Comes in through this pipe, goes into the, the pump and the pressurizer, and it'll go through the UV filter, it'll go through the 50 micron, and then the one micron, and then the, uh, the charcoal to drink. Orb can bypass it, goes through the water, or the water heater, Water heater is heated by, uh, these are coolant lines right here from the engine, so whenever you drive, the water gets hot. And then it's also electric right here, so if I haven't driven, I can just flip a switch inside and heat it up. You know, this stuff has come such a long ways in such a short amount of time that, uh, uh, I don't know, water's just way easier than it used to be. This is the bike garage, so basically its only purpose is to move these bikes around. I wouldn't want to change anything. You can see I've pretty much used every available inch, but. We could still sneak a chair or something in right there. This camper weighs so much, 18,000 pounds, that you have to have a tire this big, which is 41 inches tall. These are Continental, let's see, MPT-81s. It had dualies back here, so I did the super single swap. I didn't have to do any lift. It was four-wheel drive, and this wheel can now flip around and go on the front, so you only need one spare. You can go with five. I had Goodyear G275s in the beginning. I had nothing but issues. Go to my website and you can read the full story. With the help of James from Process Fabrication in Casa Grande, we built this rack, which has saved my back. <laughs> to get the spare tire down, I have two small winches there and the design allows for that tire to go from that position to sitting on the ground without me doing anything but using my two thumbs with two little remotes for those winches. I think the main thing I've learned is that time is more important than anything else. If you buy a pickup and throw a sleeping bag in the back and you go out in the good weather and you enjoy the outdoors, I mean, that's, do it. You know, that's the best thing to do. Try it responsibly, you know, you don't wanna, get rid of every, all your worldly possessions instantly and sell everything and then hope it works. But the memories you make, especially with friends and family and other people, it's time and it's experiences and it's not stuff. Have I been lonely? I have, yeah, definitely I've been lonely. In fact, um, a big part of me running around riding bikes is trying to find my person. You know, I've always wanted to uh, be with a, a partner wife in my case. And that, that's what's changed in the last three years for me is uh, I did find that person. So uh, the camper's winding down a little bit. We're still using it like crazy. But there's such a big community out there now of uh, other, other van people, people doing this, that you can connect with them. I think that's a lot easier nowadays. All right, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. If you need any more information about The Lost Box, you can search that word, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, website. Uh, you can find more information there about a lot of the smaller things, more details, and I hope to see you there.